me. Just don't get in my way, Grifter. Well, the Wildcats are finally back in action. Not to be confused with the feline variety or DC's Wildcat duo, this iconic covert action team from Wildstorm has come back with a gritty bang in their latest series in the DC Universe. Originally co-created by DC Comics publisher Jim Lee and writer Brandon Choi three decades ago for Image Comics, the Wildcats are a super-powered espionage crew that had literally become an emblem of the 1990s comic book scene. Many of the team's core members, including Zealot and Grifter, have withstood the test of time, evolving through different iterations and reboots within the DC Universe. Plus, the Wildcat's unique story sets them apart, with characters like Mr. Majestic clashing with iconic heroes like Superman in terms of cosmic power. Being one of Image Comics' inaugural franchises, despite their initial mainstream success with an animated series and toy line from Playmates, the Wildcats faded from the spotlight in the 90s. As they re-enter the spotlight, the Wildcats are poised to reclaim their position among DC's strongest heroes. Now, as part of the expansive DC Universe, they're making a comeback, and it was high time they reclaimed their cool factor. Through this video, we aim to appreciate the full scope of the Wildcats team, and acknowledge every iconic member's unique contribution within the team. So without wasting another moment, let's get on with exploring every significant Wildcat in detail. But before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. Spartan. So, before we go into this character, I want you guys to picture a fusion of Vision and Cyclops, and you get Spartan, a super-powered android with the memories of a long-dead warrior. Spartan was initially a cutting-edge cyborg with the unique ability to transfer his consciousness to a new body upon dying, so naturally his character has undergone multiple character revisions. Originally modeled after the Hadrian series cyborgs from the Carabim's homeworld, Spartan shared shocking similarities with Cyclops from the X-Men. But what really set Spartan apart was his intriguing twist of human emotions towards voodoo. Plus, Alan Moore's intervention added many more layers to Spartan's backstory, which revealed him as an incarnation of the long-deceased hero John Colt, also known as the Carabim Lord Jan Cole. And this was a good slice of information he had forgotten. As if this story was not complicated enough, Spartan even went on to absorb the powers of Void, which instantly elevated him to one of the Wildstorm universe's most powerful characters. Eventually, Spartan departed from the conventional superhero role and embraced the identity of Jack Marlowe by replacing Lord Emp as CEO of the Halo Company, striving to better the world by integrating highly advanced alien technology into human society. Despite initial challenges with his memory transfer, Spartan emerged as the team's leader and a significant powerhouse. Apart from showcasing the usual roster of indomitable strength, stamina, and agility, accompanied by the ability to project biokinetic energy blasts and create force fields, Spartan is also immortal, much like Imp, given that his consciousness can seamlessly transition into another body if the current one is destroyed. This immortality stems from being a current android utilizing the most advanced technology in the universe, ensuring he can easily evade permanent injury or even death. Additionally, like Vision, Spartan interfaces wirelessly with other machines, providing him access to boundless knowledge and capabilities. In essence, he stands as a dynamic and ever-evolving force within the Wildstorm universe. Suffer for your insolence, Wildcats! Don't be so... Grifter. Arguably the most recognized member of the Wildcats crew, this soldier-turned-vigilante is a gun-wielding icon. Following experimental procedures, Grifter, also known as Cole Cash, not only became a vigilante with an affinity for firearms, but also acquired telepathic powers, adding a strategic dimension to his combat prowess. Initially known as the team's resident gunslinger, Grifter's character eventually evolved beyond his tough exterior. After Cole was infused with 
with the Gen Factor, which also birthed the entire Gen 13 crew, his strength, endurance, willpower, and speed instantly skyrocketed. Plus, this guy was the only one to be trained by the Coda, as he was a former Team 7 member which only added to his popularity. Although he was usually a loner, Grifter was fiercely loyal to his partner Zealot and always had her back. It was actually Grifter's disagreements with Jacob Marlowe and the arrival of a second Wildcats group that led him to resign from the team and later go on to have his own comic series, which proved to be very disappointing. But when his brother Max died, Grifter made quite the comeback to the Wildcats, even if it was pretty short-lived given that he left again after Zealot's unforeseen demise. Later, Emp persuaded him to rejoin for the battle against Kenyon, and following Kenyon's defeat, Grifter worked for Jack Marlowe, which was not the best decision for him as it left him wheelchair-bound for a considerable time. Luckily, his latent powers eventually healed his legs, which prompted Grifter's abilities to evolve over the years. In the present day, Grifter stands as one of DC Comics' premier martial artists, boasting unparalleled expertise in hand-to-hand -hand combat, diverse fighting styles, and mastery of various weapons. Beyond physical prowess, he wields telepathic and telekinetic powers, enabling mind control, illusion creation, and even flight. Plus, his rapid healing factor also slows down his aging process, suggesting a potential for immortality, even if this extent varies across different storylines. Zealot. Take all the best features within all the current and former Wildcats, and there you have Zealot. She truly is one of Jim Lee's best creations, and basically immune to whatever is thrown at her. Reigning supreme among Coda warriors, Zealot's prowess extends beyond her Caribbean physiology and martial skills. Zealot had formerly served as the Majestrix of Xana a Caribum and Coda warrior, contributing to the development of their virtues and practices. Her existence spans thousands of years, which of course meant she had numerous relationships with both humans and aliens. Zealot was compelled to break away from the Coda after failing to adhere to their rules, and has been relentlessly pursued by her former clan ever since. Now, there are a few things about Zealot that make her a multifaceted character, like her time as Lucy Blaze in Team 1, where she began to cement her bond with Grifter, or even her unwavering devotion to her sister Savant, who was secretly her biological daughter. Plus, there are even indications that Winter from Stormwatch might actually be Zealot's son. Intriguingly enough, Zealot departed from the Wildcats briefly, joining Department PSI and co-leading Wildcore with Backlash, a half Caribum and former Team 7 member. Drawing parallels to characters like Wonder Woman and Elektra, Zealot has emerged as a complex figure who challenged her former allies in the Coda, accusing them of betraying their true purpose by becoming mere assassins, and then taking the responsibility of wiping them off single-handedly. Now, Zealot's notable distinction on the power scale lies in her proficiency as a sword Sorceress, as seen when she delved into the dark arts during a captivating century in her long life and served as an apprentice of a sorceress named Tapestry. This magical prowess grants her the ability to open portals, communicate through dreams, and even wield amazing control over matter, energy, and time. While Zealot stepped back from actively practicing sorcery, she retains vast mystical knowledge and the inherent power necessary to wield it. This positions her as one of the most potent magicians in the DC universe. Void. Void, a cosmic entity within the Wildcats universe, possesses an array of extraordinary abilities, making her one of the most enigmatic and powerful characters in the storyline. Originally based on the persona of Russian cosmonaut Adriana Tereshkova, Void's origins trace back to the arrival of a cosmic orb from space. Adriana's fusion with this silver sphere granted her the cosmic powers of Omnia, Mistress of Light. Over time, Void's connection with humanity dwindled, and the spirit of Adriana gradually moved on to the afterlife, which left the Void entity without a host for a brief period, until, of course, the betraying Noir jeopardized its existence, allowing Spartan to assume the role of Void's new host in the Wildcats narrative. Adriana's transformation into Void imbued her with remarkable powers, including the ability to see various timelines through her cosmic relationship with the Orb of Power. Her repertoire included teleportation, 
enabling her to transport herself and others anywhere globally, as well as time travel. In certain crossovers from the 1900s, she even demonstrated the capability to traverse into other comic book universes, such as the Valiant universe, which was not something we saw a lot back then among the Wildcats. It should be noted that Void's cosmic awareness is underscored by clairvoyance and precognition, providing her with insights into the future. Additionally, she wields control over energy manipulation at the quantum level, establishing her as a celestial force to be reckoned with. The early focus on her teleportation abilities expanded over time to encompass a broad range of powers, solidifying Void's status as an ever-evolving celestial being within the Wildcats universe. Warblade. Reno Bryce, or Warblade, is a human carabum hybrid with the unique ability to transform parts of his body into any solid weapon, making him an invulnerable martial artist. Despite being a virtual killing machine, Bryce also harbors the soul of an artist, with his sculpted works showcased in major art galleries. During Alan Moore's run, Warblade underwent training from a Karen Lord, enhancing his proficiency in utilizing his transformative powers. In the second series, Warblade's personal tragedy drove him to take down a mercenary named Pike, who had murdered his girlfriend, leading to his retirement as a superhero. Warblade's razor-sharp claws often evokes his comparison to various versions of Wolverine. However, as a Caribbean warrior, Warblade stands out by having the ability to shapeshift, allowing him to morph his entire body, including a living liquid metal component, into virtually any shape he desires. Notably, he can embody the properties of any metal he encounters, amplifying his strength and stamina. While Warblade frequently manifests his transformative abilities through his trademark claws, his extensive knowledge and experience in Caribbean fighting styles position him as one of the most dangerous fighters in the DC Comics realm. Caribbean's come Voodoo. Voodoo's character was intentionally focused to be conventionally hot as she made her debut in Wildcats as an exotic dancer. But that took a major backseat when her extraordinary power known as the Sight came into action, and the Wildcats came to rescue her from demonite threats. Previously known as Priscilla Catane, Voodoo is a telepathic hybrid of human caribum descent with roots in demonite ancestry, which basically means that she has the unique ability to perceive demonites inhabiting human hosts. After joining the crew, she was trained in combat by Zealot, and later developed an attraction towards Spartan. The revelation of her demonite ancestry actually occurred when Voodoo entered a coma after sustaining a gunshot wound. This allowed Void to enter her mind through a computer unveiling that one of her Caribbean ancestors had been possessed by a demonite. After being disenchanted with her superhero life, Voodoo left the Wildcats and delved into the study of voodoo magic. Later, in a brutal encounter with a serial killer named Samuel Smith, Voodoo lost both her legs. Luckily, an elderly demonite appeared to her, teaching her hidden powers of regeneration and time manipulation, which enabled her to regrow her legs. Voodoo's standout ability is the sight, an extrasensory perception akin to the Eye of Agamotto in Marvel Comics, which allows her to perceive the truth in others, making her an invaluable asset to the Wildcats. Alongside advanced telepathy and the ability to read minds, it is her magical powers that earn her the name Voodoo. While her proficiency in Voodoo magic is limited compared to other DC magicians, she can raise and control the dead, showcasing quite potent and unsettling potential. Potential. In addition to the sight, Voodoo is also capable of delivering mental blasts and creating illusions. Maul. Every comic book superhero team needs its hell-raising bruiser. So meet Jeremy Stone, the powerhouse of the Wildcats, also known as Maul. Unlike the Hulk, Maul's colossal green and purple physique stems from his Caribbean origins, showcasing his unique extraterrestrial heritage. While his massive appearance may draw comparisons to the Hulk, Maul's abilities and backstory set him apart. As a titanthrope, 
a human cherubim hybrid, Maul possesses the remarkable capacity to increase his mass, size, and density at will, which sadly comes at the cost of diminishing his reasoning capability as he grows larger. Originally a Nobel Prize-winning scientist named Dr. Jeremy Stone, Maul experiences powerful rage and undergoes a notable loss of intelligence when unleashing his superhuman capabilities. In the second series, it was revealed that he could actually increase his intelligence by reducing his body mass, albeit at the expense of physical exhaustion. Despite his indomitable powers, Jeremy's dedication to science has often led him to exhibit reluctance in wielding his superhuman abilities. With superhuman strength, durability, and stamina, Maul stands as a force to be reckoned with. While other characters like Majestic may occasionally surpass Maul in power, his unique physiology implies that his powers, theoretically, have no limit. Name's Jacob Marlowe. You're at the headquarters of my company, Halo M. Lord M. Lord M, the leader of the stranded Caribbean on Earth, traces his origins back to a shipwreck centuries ago, resulting from a fierce battle with the malevolent demonites. In his earthly disguise as Jacob Marlowe, Lord M stands as a wealthy magnet at the helm of the Halo Corporation, a media and technology conglomerate. While once a Caribbean warlord, M's memory actually holds no recollection of his past and the powers he once commanded now remain beyond his control. It was actually Void who rescued him from a life of homelessness and then helped transform him into the financial backbone of the Wildcats. Throughout history, Emp has assumed various affluent personas, including that of industrialist Saul Baxter in the 20th century. In the second series, Emp undergoes a transformation, adopting a more alien appearance in anticipation of his ascension. This process results in the relinquishment of his physical form but grants freedom to his spirit. Naturally, he had to leave the physical realm, so he bequeathed all his possessions to Spartan. Beyond his stern leadership, Emp possesses psychokinetic abilities, endowing him with remarkable telepathic and telekinetic prowess. In addition to his extraordinary attributes, his alien DNA bestows a form of immortality upon him. Mr. Majestic. This powerful cherubim trapped on Earth is easily one of the most powerful figures in both the Wildstorm and DC universes. As the father of Savant, his influence and strength extend beyond the confines of the Wildcats. In addition to the standard features shared by every Wildcat, Mr. Majestic possesses a unique resistance to magic, setting him a bit ahead in potential head-to-head matchups with characters like Zealot and Voodoo. Often likened to a Superman archetype, Mr. Majestic's abilities include super strength, durability, and flight, surpassing even the feats of the Man of Steel in certain instances. Beyond physical prowess, Mr. Majestic distinguishes himself as a genius inventor and a highly skilled martial artist, with a particular focus on swordplay. Plus, his recent foray into the Superman comics saw him briefly replacing the iconic Man of Steel actually underscoring his significance in the broader DC universe. One of Mr. Majestic's defining attributes is his immunity to almost all magical abilities, which really is a rare quality among superheroes. This, coupled with his invulnerability and immortality, positions him not only as one of the most potent wildcats, but also as one of the mightiest superheroes in the DC universe. His powers mirror Superman's in many respects, including energy beams from the eyes, freezing breath, and superhuman strength. However, Mr. Majestic's arsenal extends further, incorporating psionic abilities that surpass those of Superman, adding layers of complexity to his character and solidifying his status as a force to be reckoned with in the realm of superheroes. Ladytron. Maxine Manchester, a rebellious cyborg punk with a penchant for violence, found herself entangled with the Wildcats after being captured and subjected to Tao's reprogramming. Originally harboring homicidal tendencies, she was persuaded to join the team. Maxine held quite an admiration for the cybernetic mercenary Overkill and harbored romantic feelings for Max Cash, although her affections were not exactly reciprocated. When TAO was unmasked as a traitor, he 
incapacitated Lady Tron's robotic body, leading her to seek refuge with the Church of Gort, which was a futuristic cult devoted to robotics. However, her ongoing possession of organic body parts caused a rift with the cult members, prompting her return to the Wildcats. Unfortunately, Lady Tron faced severe injuries inflicted by the serial killer Samuel Smith, resulting in extensive damage which forced her to shut down. She was once briefly manipulated as a pawn by Noir. Lady Tron's consciousness then underwent a significant transformation, as her mind was downloaded into the Halo mainframe, while her physical body became a remote-controlled surrogate for the wheelchair-bound Grifter. Lady Tron's cybernetic enhancements grant her a myriad of superhuman abilities, making her presence among the Wildcats quite iconic. These enhancements include flight, an array of integrated weapons that can be further augmented, and the capacity to interface seamlessly with machines, including computers. Nemesis Nemesis revels in the gift of immortality bestowed upon her by her care in physiology. Having arrived on Earth thousands of years ago, she remains untouched by the passage of time, absolutely rejoicing in an ageless existence. Her body, resilient to most toxins and diseases, is fortified by a healing factor that neutralizes any advantage a superior opponent might possess, establishing her as quite the powerful force with only a few equals. As Lady Charis, Nemesis underwent training as a Kota warrior, eventually becoming an elite combatant skilled with a diverse array of weapons. Her mastery in swordsmanship, coupled with her superhuman attributes encompassing strength, speed, and agility, elevates her to the ranks of powerful members within the Wildcats. Backlash Born in the sunken realm of Atlantis, Mark Slayton emerged as the son of a human mother and a Caribbean lord named Slayton. Following his father sacrificing his life to imprison the hostile Duran, who had led to the destruction of Atlantis, Mark was entrusted to Farian, his father's former advisor. Raised and tutored in combat skills by Farian, Mark embarked on an extraordinary journey spanning three millennia. Over the centuries, Mark's memories became fragmented with various experiences that included periods as a ninja, a medieval knight, and a World War II intelligence specialist. In the 1960s, he held the rank of Air Force Colonel and became part of Team One, a squad dedicated to combating extraterrestrial threats. Later, adopting the codename Backlash, Mark joined Team Seven, a special ops unit exposed to the Gen Factor, unlocking superhuman powers rooted in his alien heritage. After Team Seven's final mission, Mark brokered a deal to protect his teammates and their families by offering his service Services. He then infiltrated Stormwatch, serving as a field leader and instructor until a personal crisis led to his departure. Pursuing justice for his comatose girlfriend, Mark became a fugitive alongside Taboo, a former Cabal agent turned lover. Later discovering he fathered twins in Japan, Mark confronted his Caribbean ancestry and formed the superpowered team Wild Corps. After a tragic mission resulting in the team's demise, Mark, now equipped with a bionic leg, continued his work with the Department of Paranormal Science Investigations, although his legacy lived on through his daughter Jody, who assumed the mantle of Backlash. Savant. Savant, the daughter of Lord Magestros and Zealot, initially believed herself to be Zealot's sister until recent revelations shed light on her true parentage. As an adventurer, Savant possesses an impressive array of mystical artifacts and advanced technologies. Notable among her possessions are boots with teleportation capabilities and a fragment of the powerful orb. Endowed with superhuman strength, Savant also boasts a genius level intellect, although her dominion demeanor can be characterized as occasionally irresponsible and brash. Despite not reaching the same level of power as her parents, Zealot and Mr. Majestic, Savant benefits from enhanced strength, endurance, and stamina owing to her Caribbean physiology making her an invaluable force in combat. In contrast to her mother's warrior lifestyle within the Coda, Savant charted her own course as an archaeologist, which really is quite a divergence from the path of a warrior. Seems like we can actually draw parallels to the likes of Indiana Jones, given Savant's adventures often unfold in a unique narrative, adding layers to her character beyond the shadow of her illustrious lineage. 
Kenyon. Originally a mortal who was granted immortality by Lord Emp, Kenyon concealed a malevolent nature that escaped Emp's knowledge. Emp's unintentional gift transformed Kenyon into an immortal being with a twisted agenda, utilizing pilfered alien technology to pursue global destruction and domination. The intricate narrative of Kenyon's dark path and his intricate connection with Lord Emp became the catalyst for the new team's endeavors. With a cache of stolen alien technology at his disposal, Kenyon posed a significant threat to the world, prompting the new team's efforts to thwart his nefarious plans. Ultimately, his reign of terror was brought to an end by the very being who had unwittingly granted him immortality, Lord M, which finally marked the resolution of Kenyon's malevolent exploits. Tau. Tau, or Tactical Augmented Organism, stands as a meticulously crafted artificial human engineered with unique cognitive abilities that transcend normal human capacities. His extraordinary persuasiveness and intuitive insights set him apart, making him a crucial member of the Wildcats when they were formed in the early 2000s. With superhuman intelligence, predictive thinking, and tactical analysis, Tau contributed significantly to the team's efforts against extraterrestrial threats and criminal adversaries. However, as the Wildcats unfolded their saga, it was revealed that Tao harbored darker intentions as he was manipulating the team toward self-destruction, and emerged as the mastermind orchestrating their downfall. In a climactic confrontation with Majestic, Tao appeared to meet his demise, cleverly having a shape-shifted prisoner take the fatal hit. Of course, he did resurface later, and embarked on a new chapter, establishing a global criminal organization with a mission to destabilize human governments, institutions, and secret societies within the Wildstorm universe. The aftermath of his departure from the Wildcats is explored in the series Point Blank and Sleeper, shedding light on Tao's intricate machinations and the consequences of his unparalleled intellect. Mythos. As another member of the Caribbean race, Mythos faced the fate of being stranded on Earth centuries ago when his spaceship crash-landed following a fierce battle with the Demonites. When the Wildcats were approached by Olympia seeking assistance against Elijah Sterling, who had orchestrated the deployment of saboteurs to alter the course of history, Mythos joined their ranks. It should be taken into account that Sterling's machinations aimed at eradicating both Caribbean and Demonites before their arrival on Earth prompted the Wildcats, including Mythos, to intervene and counteract the threat. Olympia. Olympia, a demonite mercenary with CODA training, defied the typical aggressive nature of her species, embracing a peaceful stance. It should be noted that she extended her compassion by adopting a teenager named Ming Kai Shen, who also received CODA training. Aligning herself with the Wildcats, Olympia embarked on a temporal journey alongside them to thwart the Puritans a group with plans to alter history by preventing the arrival of both Caribbean and Demonites on Earth. Throughout this time-traveling adventure, Olympia forged a closer connection with Max Cash. Tragically, she met her demise in ancient Rome during their expedition. However, through a twist of fate, Max prevented her death by picking her up and returning to the present. Separated from their teammates, Max and Olympia found themselves in different timelines. Naturally, Olympia, along with Ming Kai Shen, resumed her existence in the present. Meanwhile, Max, reappearing in New York Harbor, faced an untimely demise at the hands of an assassin. When she learnt of this, Olympia avenged Max by eliminating his assassin. However, her own life took a dark turn during the Devil's Night crossover, as she fell victim to a zombified Max Cash, finally marking the end of her journey. Agent Wax Agent Wax was Jack Marlowe's informant within the National Park Service, a government agency overseeing superhuman activities. He possessed a unique skill set centered around potent hypnotic powers, which was something he concealed from his superiors. Following the tragic death of his partner, Wax initially resigned from the service, but later returned. However, his departure led to a desk job, accompanied by mistreatment from his boss, Agent Downs. Seeking retribution, Wax orchestrated a revenge plot by engaging in an affair with Down's wife, which really spiced up the drama. When Down's discovered Wax's manipulations, it triggered a clash, and Wax, leveraging his hypnotic abilities, forced 
Downs to take his own life. If that was not enough, Wax used his powers to assume Downs' identity. But despite learning of Downs' demise, Jack Marlowe opted to afford Wax a second chance, acknowledging the complexities surrounding his actions. Edwin Dolby Edwin Dolby, also known as Grifter II, held a pivotal role as Jack Marlowe's chief accountant and trusted ally within the Halo Corporation. Following a mission that left Grifter incapacitated with severe leg injuries, Marlowe realized that Dolby had a natural talent for marksmanship and initiated training to mold him into the second Grifter. Despite Dolby's initial reluctance to take a life, circumstances led him to be dispatched on a mission where a tragic accident resulted in the unintentional death of an individual. Overwhelmed by guilt and experiencing a mental breakdown, Dolby decided to part ways with Halo. However, Jack Marlowe's persuasive efforts ultimately convinced him to return, emphasizing the importance of Halo's mission and reinforcing Dolby's belief in its success. The Beef Boys The Beef Boys were employed by Grifter to serve as his muscle men. Clad in distinctive bondage attire, Cedric, the articulate leader, and Glenn, the silent dude, possessed remarkable, perhaps superhuman strength. In addition to their role as enforcers for Grifter, the duo manages an S&M club during their off-duty hours. Tragically, Glenn met his demise at the hands of the Coda, marking a significant turn of events for this unique pair. Condition Red As the younger sibling of Grifter, Max Cash possesses commendable combat and marksmanship skills, albeit with some limitations. His storyline unfolds tragically when he falls victim to a Coda assassin, succumbing to gunfire in the final issue of the first series. Despite his demise, Max experiences an unexpected resurrection, returning as a zombie during the second series. In the Wildstorm universe, Max Cash operates under the moniker Condition Red, as a super soldier. Initially aligned with the international operations, he later transitioned to freelance work, with his brother Grifter also being part of the Wildcats. It should be noted that there is another unrelated character named Caleb who assumes the Condition Red identity and becomes a member of the monarchy. In the New 52 reboot, Max Cash is portrayed as a government agent meeting his demise at the hands of demonites. Agent Orange Agent Orange was a result of a government experiment which involved replacing his blood with dioxin. He emerges as an almost unstoppable operative with a microchip for tracking and instructions. When scientist Jeremy Stone encounters the sentient supercomputer Madge, the FBI targets him, leading to a confrontation with Grifter, who eliminates Agent Cartman but faces the nearly invulnerable Agent Orange. It was Stone who was guided by Madge to to activate a failsafe, rendering Agent Orange inert. Later, Agent Orange again resurfaced in the Atomic Family, a seemingly ordinary household of enhanced FBI agents. Later, Jack Marlowe intervened, reprogramming Agent Orange as a mole within the FBI. The reactivated Agent Orange assisted in investigating murders related to the CODA. When Agent Orange was captured by the CODA, he withstood all forms of torture until Grifter, with allies, staged a rescue rescue mission. Subsequently, Marlowe teleported them to safety before the CODA's base exploded, finally concluding a complex narrative of government experiments, superhuman conflicts, and strategic interventions. Marvelous Verdict So, these were all the major Wildcat members in the Wildstorm universe. Now, I know most of these characters have quite a lot of similarities with our existing superheroes within the DC and Marvel canon, but somehow, if you keenly look into their characters, each of them can be distinguished from one another in lieu of their eccentricities. Nonetheless, what do you think of this iconic superhero team? Let us know about your thoughts and opinions in the comment box below. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone.